So today we're going to take a step back and talk a little bit about what uh, complex systems is, what emergence is, and what the feedbacks are. And the reason why we're going to talk about these is because they're fundamental in many ways to the types of problems that agent-based modeling can solve well and uh, with a great benefit. I should mention before I get too much into this uh, that there is an entire other MOOC on Complexity Explorer offered by Melanie Mitchell that's really a great introduction to complex systems. I highly recommend uh, that if this is an, of an interesting topic for you, that you kind of spend some time with that MOOC and all the materials that are available for there. I should also mention that this is my particular take upon complex systems, emergence, and feedbacks, but uh, that this is a take that I think is uh, fairly well accepted by others as well. So what is complex systems? Well, complex systems are a system composed of many interacting parts in which the emergent outcome of the system is a product of the interactions between those parts and the feedbacks between that emergent outcome and individual decisions. And complex systems really, for me, is defined by these two notions of emergence and feedbacks. So let's talk about each of those in turn. So let's take, for example, the traffic model that you saw already, the basic traffic model with the red car moving along uh, that kind of stops and starts quite a bit. Uh, and on the right, I have a picture of an actual traffic jam. Jam is kind of an illustration of that. Um, and what you'll notice, right, is that the, that the system here is composed of many interacting parts. You have all the cars, they're interacting with each other, they're controlled by the speed of the other cars, uh, but they're also controlled by the feedback from the emergent outcome of those parts, right? So the emergent outcome of the traffic model is a traffic jam in many ways, which is a set of stopped cars that can't go anywhere. And those stopped cars feed back to affect the individual decisions of the cars that are moving in, uh, by themselves. So emergence is the idea that the action of the whole is more than the sum of the parts. And that's from uh, John Holland's 2014 book on uh, Brief Introduction to Complexity. And let's stay with the notion of traffic for a while because it's an interesting notion where there's a lot of uh, emergent phenomenon that occur. So let's t I want to tell you a little story about uh, commuting patterns in Washington, D.C., which may sound kind of boring, but it's kind of actually interesting. So in 1975, on the Shirley Memorial Freeway in Washington, D.C., uh, which is a stretch of I-95 slash 395, uh, they instituted what was known as a high occupancy vehicle lane. And the idea behind this lane is that they wanted to encourage uh, commuters to ride share to get more than one person in a car so that they weren't uh, had all these cars with just one person this you know the idea was this would reduce the number of cars maybe reduce the number of carbon dioxide emissions the amount of carbon dioxide emissions and kind of overall make the world a better place um, and there were a lot of people who were taking these but there were some individuals who weren't able to actually uh, find someone nearby that they knew who's a friend who they could share a ride with right um, and it, you know it, on the other end they might not be able to find someone right at the time they wanted to leave going back to their suburban neighborhood who would be willing to take uh, a ride as well or who was interested to take a ride so what developed was an interesting phenomenon, an emergent process of these kind of policy interactions and the individual desires of people to want to move quickly through um, the, the commuting space, uh, was the notion of slugging. And slugging um, kind of emerged um, uh, spontaneously, but essentially what it was was that there started to develop a series of lines um, at both in suburban areas and in downtown DC, where um, individuals would wait to um, uh, get in the cars with other individuals who are going to then use the high occupancy vehicle lanes. This would allow them to get much faster uh, to their destinations and allow these people to use the HOV lanes. And this was an emergent process. It was a process that came around due to a bunch of individual decisions and also a governmental decision to institute high occupancy vehicle lanes. There was also a bunch of norms that arose around slugging that were kind of interesting that um, were allowed people to kind of uh, 
satisfy the safety requirements of these systems, right? So for instance, drivers um, are not allowed to pick up sluggers and routes or standing outside the line because that, that would violate kind of some fair practice facilities. A woman is not to be left in the line alone for her safety. Um, you're not allowed to eat or smoke or put on makeup in the cars. The driver has full control of the radio and climate controls. Um, no, you're not allowed to roll down the windows unless the driver, et cetera, et cetera. There's a bunch of different rules that kind of spontaneously emerge. And this is a great example of how emergent processes can actually um, come from a variety of different uh, directions and a variety of different interactions. So emergent phenomena don't just come into being and that's the end of the story. What's interesting about emergent phenomena in many ways is that they feed back to then affect the future decisions of other individuals in that system. So in the slugging case, for instance, the emergence of slug lines might have shifted people from public transit, might have shifted people from driving by themselves, might have shifted them from other places to then make decisions about that they were going to use slug lines instead, uh, this encouraging more slug lines and encouraging more emergent phenomena along the space. Another example that you can think of is um, uh, market share, right? So the individual decision for me to buy a PlayStation versus an Xbox uh, is an individual decision on my own, but in fact, it then contributes to the market share of the Xbox versus uh, the PlayStation. And that market share then contributes to my decision or future decisions of other people as to whether to buy a PlayStation or an Xbox, right? The same is true of things like beta versus VHS or the QWERTY versus the Dvorak keyboard. In all these cases, right, once we start down a path where there's an emergent result of a bunch of individual decisions, that emergent result of a dominant brand or dominant uh, uh, standard, such as QWERTY and, and, and beta and VHS, right, then affect my individual decision as to what kind of products and what kinds of techniques I'm going to learn in the future. Nowadays, it makes very little you know, sense to uh, learn a Dvorak keyboard because there aren't many Dvorak keyboards out there, much as it doesn't make, wouldn't have made much sense to buy a beta tape in, in the 2000, the 90, 1990s because there weren't many beta players or many beta um, tapes available at that time. So this, the emergent patterns feedback to affect individual decisions, and that in many ways is one of the second key components of a complex system. So given all these complexities of complex systems, such as emergence and feedback and the relationships between individuals and groups, how do you begin to understand complex systems? Well, as you might expect, as a result of these things, complex systems can be very difficult to predict, control, and manage. But the goal of agent-based modeling and complex systems analysis in general, for that matter, is often to provide a flight simulator rather than a perfect prediction of the complex system. Let's think about this for a bit. So, a flight simulator, um, such as you might use if you wanted to train how to fly, provides you with a mock-up of scenarios that you might see as you're flying a plane or flying a, uh, flying a plane, right? It doesn't provide a perfect replication of that world, and it doesn't provide a perfect prediction of exactly what's going to happen. However, it does give you some insight as to how the plane might behave in those scenarios. In much the same way, agent-based modeling and simulation in general often provide you with an insight into how a social system or an engineered system or a natural system might behave under a variety of different circumstances, uh, even if it doesn't provide you with a perfect prediction of how that system is going to behave.